Hello, hello everybody. We are going to be going over this NPS dashboard I put together. NPS is Net Promoter Score. It's something you will probably come across in your career at some point. It's a magical metric that tells us how much people like your brand or your product or service. And it's a survey metric that's been studied really extensively and correlates really strongly with business performance. So as always, we start with a table of data. NPS data is usually going to be survey responses. So you'll have a score, a comment, maybe something identifying who gave the response and a date for when the response was given. We then classify every single response as being a promoter, a passive, or a detractor based on their score. Promoters have a score of 9 or 10, passives have a score of 7 or 8, and detractors are anyone with a score that's 6 or lower. I just wrote a little if statement up here to do that. You can see it here. All we're saying is if your score is in this range, add text for one of these labels. Once I'm familiarized with my data, that's when I like to start hashing out what's gonna actually go on my dashboard. So I'm giving this a dark background, and then under the insert tab, I'm gonna use shapes to rough out what goes on the page. So I know my focal point's gonna be a big old circle. I know I wanna have a few sections in here for each classification of respondent. We're just gonna get that all organized and then uh, start styling a little bit just to get a sense of how much space we need and what kind of colors we're gonna use. I think I'm gonna use what's called kind of a pill shape here, meaning totally rounding out the edges of each of these rounded rectangles. And then I'm gonna block out a little spot on the left with a circle where I'm gonna drop my main metric for each of these. And now it's time to get our colors figured out. So I've started these out with some very subtle, very transparent colors and fills. I'm just gonna walk you through these so you can replicate it yourself. So on a lot of these, I'm starting out just with an outline. It's a solid line, about 2.25 points, and it's 78% transparent with a fairly dark blue color. That's just gonna create a kind of glowy effect. That mostly transparent look is part of the glow effect that we see. And then on these brighter ones you see, I've actually gone into the shape formatting options and added a glow. It's one of the options we have here. I've used a slightly brighter blue for that. I've made it really big, 50-ish points, and I've made it 90% transparent, 91%, so very, very transparent. And that's what creates that kind of big spacey glow that you see, and people seem to really like that effect. I've done something similar with these little circles over here, except in this example, I've given it a fill color, which is just a fairly transparent blue, 60% transparent. And then for these pill shapes that we saw before, I've given these a gradient fill, and that's just a grayish color that's like 80% transparent on one side to 96% transparent on the other, which essentially just creates that glassy look you see and it's a linear gradient in this case. And you'll notice over here that I've added an extra circle just because because I know I'm gonna need that as the intersection of the chart that I'll be putting on here later. I think it looks pretty good. Let's move on. For almost all of our summary metrics, we're gonna be using pivot tables. You add pivot tables under the insert tab. There's a pivot table option in here, upper left. So first things first, I just wanted to come up with a general NPS score. So we've taken classification as our columns and our values are the count of classification and that's going to be counting each value for each of the classifications that we have. Now we've done two things to make this show up as a percentage which we need to use to calculate our NPS. We right click our value, go to field settings. First thing we do is we summarize it by count, meaning instead of summing everything up it's counting and under show data as we change it to percentage of row total and hit OK. What that's going to do is it's going to show each of these as a percentage of the total for all categories which is the first step in calculating NPS. Now, right next to our pivot table, we're gonna subtract the total number of detractors from the total number of promoters, and that gives us our NPS score. And you'll notice I added a filler next to it. That is so that we have a 100% donut chart, and this will represent a percentage in that 100% donut. Now we're gonna start dropping in our text boxes. It's under the insert tab. You've got a text box option in there. So a couple things to keep in mind here. First is you're gonna to have to clear out the background of these. It's just in the format shape tab and remove the outline on them. I don't know why they include that by default, but they do. Uh, and then if you have one of these and you want it to point to a metric in your formula bar, you hit equals, go over to the metric you want, click that metric, hit enter, and then you're gonna have to format your text just to get it looking right. And this is now gonna be tied to that actual cell. So whenever that cell updates, it'll flow through and show up in this text box. Now I'm just gonna go through and drop all of the text in here and I'll talk a little bit about formatting afterwards, but the process is basically the same for all of these. Okay, so we've got all our text in place. So I think our next big step here is to start dropping in our charts. I want to add in a nice big donut chart here around the outside as a design element. This is not necessarily about being an actionable chart, it's just one 
that is going to make the whole thing look more interesting. And whenever we can have a design element tied to real data, we want it to be. So I'll show you how that works. I've done a few different tables here and I'll just walk you through what they are and how they're calculated. The first is just a breakdown of NPS for all of our data. What we're looking at is the percentage of each type of classification, detractor, passive, and promoter. And then we're just taking the total percentage of detractors and subtracting that from the total percentage of promoters. And I've also added this filter here, which we're gonna use for the donut chart in a sec. Now, if you're feeling a little lost or overwhelmed at this point, don't worry, I think the easiest way to do this is to just get a copy of this template and start pulling it apart and looking at each piece. I know it can be hard to understand this in real time, so if you want, you can hop on the newsletter on my profile and I send out templates, uh, including this one, so that people can kind of look at it themselves and get their hands on it. To start things off, let me just show you how I've created this double donut chart that you see around NPS. It looks scary, but it's not as bad as you might think. Now what I can do is I can just highlight both of these, go to the insert tab, drop down to donut and drop in a donut chart. But I also wanna show the NPS score for the current month. So I've got this score here. I've used a little lookup function to grab the latest month. And then I've done the same absolute value trick right next to it. So we highlight both of these, go to insert, drop in our donut chart. Okay, now here's the trick. We're gonna click into this donut. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna go over to our other donut, click into the series and paste. And now we've got both of them in the same chart and we can delete our old one. We'll pull this over to the dashboard and just get it styled. So when we drop in a chart, obviously the first thing we do, delete any labels we don't want, any other elements we don't want. And then we always wanna go in and take the background out so it's transparent and take out the border. You'll notice a lot of things in Excel have a border around them. So you have to remember to remove that as well. Then we'll get this generally to the size we want kind of get it in place and we'll start getting it set up. So when we format charts, it's important to remember that you can click into each element and format each one separately. So I can click into this orange section, change it to a color that's a little closer to what I want. I'm gonna make this a little transparent too, just as part of the design. We'll go to this other orange section and do the same thing. But yeah, then we'll click into these lighter blue sections, make them a little transparent as well. And on all of these, we're gonna drop the transparent, or we're gonna increase the transparency on our border so that it's not such a bright border around it. And we're starting to have something kind of nice here. Um, I'm gonna increase the transparency a little bit on these. And in this case, I think I'm actually gonna change my borders to a nice blue color because I like that it's a little more subtle. We'll do like a 50% transparent blue here. And before you know it, we have something that looks kind of nice here. Again, is this the most actionable chart in the world? No, but it looks good and it is tied to data. Okay, next we wanna drop in some trend lines. Again, fairly straightforward process here. We go to our pivot tables. We're just gonna click into our pivot table, go to the insert tab, pivot chart, and it's gonna automatically generate a chart. By default, you're gonna get a bar chart. What you can do is just click into the bars, go to the design tab, and under the design tab, hit change chart type, and we're gonna just select a line chart. Now I'm just gonna bring this over and show you how to style it. We're doing the same thing for each of these charts, so I think we only need to go over it once. So we drop our chart in. We're gonna do the same thing we did before, remove any extra labels we don't want, any uh, anything we're not using here, we're gonna take out. You can click into your grid lines and remove them. Of course, we're gonna go over and we're gonna remove our background and the border and change our font color to white. Things are looking pretty good there. Now, in this case, if we just want this to be a trend line, we just delete all the other elements and then we just got a nice nifty little trend line chart here. You can also update these colors by just clicking into the series, changing it to white, and then also remember you have to change your marker as well. The marker is the little dot on the line chart. Go there, change that to white as well. And there you go, we got a nice little clean line we can drop in wherever we want it. So I've done one of these lines for each of these, but I've also included labels. And if you don't have labels showing up, you just go to design, add chart element, and there's a data labels option to drop. So now with a little bit of work, we've created an NPS report that's visually engaging, that gives more contextual information to make it a little more actionable and useful. I think we've really leveled up something that is often just a number that gets thrown around. One of the big things here is the promoter passives and detractor sections, which are really telling you, hey, we're working with a small data set. We've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine respondents here, not a lot. And that's important because it means this NPS score might not be as meaningful until we get more responses in. These kinds of things can really go a long way when you're interpreting this kind of data. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been great showing you all this fun little project I've been working on. More to come soon. Thank you so much.